Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna go over my retouching process, which recently changed because I just started using the plugins from Infinite Tools. Now they provided me with all of the plugins to try out a few months ago. And um, I agreed that I would make a video about it provided that I actually use them in my workflow. So I didn't find uh, that all of them were for me, but a couple of them really helped out to improve things. So I'm gonna go over step-by-step step how I retouch my pictures in Photoshop using their plugins. I'll put a link to them below. Uh, there's two of them uh, that I'll be using in today's uh, video. Um, so before I launch my photos into Photoshop, I color grade them and do some basic corrections in Capture One. Now I have videos on my membership site, the Academy with John Gress, that goes over this process. But just know that basically what I'm doing is I'm applying a film simulation look from their Beyond Film style packs and just making some basic corrections. And then I'm exporting, uh, depending on what I'm gonna do, an 8-bit or a 16-bit TIFF file in Adobe RGB. But I'll have a little bit more on that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and get started here with our photo of Haley. So here's the image of Haley right out of the camera, or I should say right out of Capture One with the color grade applied. The first thing I'm gonna fix is her thumb here. It's driving me nuts that it's sticking out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool and I'm gonna select her shoulder here because I wanna maintain um, this part of the frame. I, I just wanna push the thumb into it basically. So I'm gonna make a selection that seems pretty good. I'll go back a little bit further. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna select the inverse. Then I'm gonna go up to Filter and Liquify. Then I'll zoom back in again here on her thumb. You can see that that area that we're not going to change is here in red. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this first tool here, the Forward Warp tool. And I'm gonna use a smaller brush that's about the size of, well, a little bit larger than her thumb, let's say. And I'm just gonna grab it and I'm just gonna push it over until it touches her shoulder. Make sure that I didn't do anything weird. All right, so I see that I, I sort of warped the tip. So I'm gonna grab the tip of her thumb. You know what, I've gotta grab a bigger brush. Okay, there we've got the tip of her thumb, including the nail. I'm just gonna push it over. I think I could probably come back in here with a smaller brush and grab the tip of her nail and just sort of push that over too. Okay, great. So let's see just a quick before and after. Okay, I think I've reasonably maintained the integrity of the shape here. I'll click okay. There's our before and after. Okay, that feels pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that selection that I have there of her shoulder. Well, I'm gonna undo it. So you'll see that there's a shadow here from the thumb that probably shouldn't exist anymore. And you'll also see that there's sort of this gap in here with the hair. So I'm gonna select that. And then I'm just gonna come back up here and grab this shadow. Went, I clicked one time too many. Let's see, there we go. All right, so um, now I'm gonna go to Edit and Content Aware Fill and I'm gonna let Photoshop fill in in that area what it thinks uh, should exist. So I'm gonna undo this hair selection here because literally we only need the skin from her shoulder. I don't need her finger. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so there is our fixed um, thumb. Here was our beginning. Here's where we're at now. That feels pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and um, just, well, I'll leave that layer there for now. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up two layers. One I'm gonna label clone and one I'm gonna label heal. And I'm gonna do the cloning and the healing respectively in those two layers. Um, the reason I'm not doing all of my cloning and healing in the same layer is because it can cause artifacting and look a little weird where those two tools overlap. So you just wanna keep them in separate layers. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna say layer, new layer. I'm gonna call it clone. I'm gonna grab another layer. I'm gonna call it 
heal. Okay, great. I am going to now group these. And I'm going to call this clone and heal. Okay, great. And I'll, I'll expand the look here. Okay, so with the clone tool, I wanna to go ahead and go click on the clone layer and grab the clone tool. Now up here at the top, you wanna sample current and below. And that way you'll be um, using that information that's below this layer in order to uh, add things on here. So let me just give you an example. So I'm gonna start working on these flyaways and I'm gonna grab a brush and keep it about a 50% um, hardness. The reason why is I don't wanna make these, um, the tips of her hair, I don't wanna make them translucent. I wanna make them kind of more abrupt like they would be in the real world. Now I've already got my selection here of her shoulder. So I've gotta hit, um, de I've gotta deselect it. So I just hit Command D. All right, so I'm gonna start cloning here and I'm gonna start cleaning up this hair and I'm just cloning over from the background. And just to give you an example, if I had my hardness set to zero, I guess it would still work. It's just that I feel better usually when it's on medium. Yeah, that looks a little too translucent. So let's put it back up here. Now you wanna be cognizant when you're using this 50% um, you know, feather uh, hardness that you aren't um, causing there to be streaks on the background and that sort of thing. But just know that that's generally how I would approach dealing with these flyaways and I would go all around the hair. Now I'll just click here on the heel layer and kind of show you what we're gonna do with that. So coming up here um, to her forehead area, um, you wanna click on the heel brush, the one over here on the right, the healing brush tool. And you wanna say use legacy. I find that that works out better. Um, that we're gonna use that part and we're gonna do again current and below. So let's go ahead now and I'm just gonna clone from over here to over there. And we're gonna, and I should be using my uh, Wacom tablet. Um, and I'll put a link to the tablet in the description as well. It was a Black Friday purchase that I had last year, did last year, and it actually, it changed things for me a lot because I felt like um, I could be a lot more refined in what I was doing and it wasn't so heavy handed because the pin pressure uh, contributes to the outcome and um, it just it just gives better results overall. I haven't changed any of the default settings. I've just used it like straight out of the box how it comes and it works out pretty well for me. And we'll work on one of these hairs over here. Can do better. I'm going to use a little bit larger um, heel brush. Just work on these blemishes up here. Well, that feels pretty good. Just know that I'm going to continue on going with that. Now, like a proper cooking show, I'll just advance now and show you um, a version of this photo that I already have healed with all the work done. And then I'll paste that into our, our window here and we'll, uh, we'll keep going on with the next steps. All right, so I'm just going to drop in that finished one there. And there we have it. And I'll zoom out. Sort of give you a quick before and after, if you will. So here it is with all my healing and cloning done. Here it is without. So you can see that I've taken this hair away from down here by her, um, her left hand. Yeah, her left hand. Um, so just sort of cleaned up everything around the edges and, and so forth. So, and you saw her thumb move and that's because this is the version I did originally when I retouched this photo, not the one I was doing in the demo just now. So. Um, so again, here is after all the cloning is done and here is before. So just to give you a general idea. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is the very first Infinite Tools plugin that I use in my workflow. And that is the Infinite Skin 
uh, plugin. It's just going to smooth out the, the skin, sort of like what you would see in Photoshop if you use the neural filters. That's what I was using before. But the drawback of using the neural filters is that you can only apply the effect to the person's face and you can apply it to their body. Whereas with this plugin, you can apply it everywhere and you can get that universal skin smoothing uh, and you don't have that weird thing happening where like the face looks really different than the body. I also found that the um, neural filters skin smoothing was a little bit clunky and I find that this works really well, um, much better overall. So let me go ahead and just pull the plugin up here. So I'll come up here next to the navigator and then right there, there's the infinite skin. And you'll notice right here, there's light, medium, and strong. So light is just light, medium is medium, and strong is strong. So I normally like to go with light and just strengthen it a little bit. So I'll click on light over here, and then I'll just bring the smoothing up a little, make it a little more impactful, and um, the clarity uh, down a little to this direction. So um, if you wanna see what medium looks like, there's the preset. There's the preset for strong. Let's go back to light. And I'm just gonna pull this up a little and pull that down a little. So the next thing you'll see are these three icons here at the bottom. So the one in the lower left, that's blend if. And if it's selected, what it's gonna do is it's going to not apply the skin smoothing to the brightest and darkest parts of the skin. I would just leave this unchecked or unactivated. Um, that way you can decide later if you would like to um, remove it um, from those areas using a black brush on a layer mask. And we'll go over that in just a second. And speaking of mask, that's exactly what's in the middle here. So if you don't have this uh, turned on so that it's white, um, so when it is white, it's not going to give you a mask of the skin automatically. And when it's grayed out, it will give you a mask of the skin automatically. Now, I like to just let it um, try to do the mask itself automatically. And the reason for that is it does a good job most of the time. But if you have a frame where there's a lot of elements in the shot that are similar to the skin tone, like this one that you can see here, uh, where she's posing in front of this gold backdrop, it's gonna end up selecting a lot of the background and having it auto fill in the mask or do the mask for you for the skin is going to be kind of a waste of time. But on this image, I'm gonna make sure that that's grayed out and not white. So it's gonna create the mask for me automatically because there aren't a lot of parts of this frame um, that are similar to her skin tone that aren't her skin. So I think it should be just fine. Then on the lower right, that tool there, this little eye right here, if you turn it on, it will disable the mask temporarily and it will show you the skin smoothing applied to the entire frame. And that'll sort of give you an idea of what the potential could be if you wanted to add the skin smoothing everywhere and not just to the skin. So I would definitely leave this grayed out and not white. So let's go ahead and click on create right here. And it will go through the process of figuring out exactly how much smoothing to add and which areas. It's going to analyze it and do all that stuff. And it's going to create the mask for us. I'm using a new Mac Studio. And so it took about that long for it to go through the process. Uh, my Mac Studio is um, the, um, the Max chip with 64 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte um, hard drive. I think that's right, but I'll put the real specs down on the screen. Sorry, it's been a few months since I bought it. About a $3,000 version. Okay, so right now you can see, I'll turn this on and off. Um, here is the skin smoothing turned on and here it is turned off. And we'll just zoom in here a little bit more. So here it is on and here it is off. So we're just knocking down some of that detail. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off um, everything here that we had before. And now you can see exactly where the skin smoothing is being applied. So like I said earlier, that maybe we'd see it in some areas we didn't want it applied to and we'd wanna get rid of it. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do, because we're just dealing with the mask right now, is I'm gonna come over to my paintbrush here and I'm gonna make sure that my opacity is at 100% and my flow is at 100% and I'm gonna to toggle over here and click and make sure that this color is exactly black. And so now 
when I go over parts of the frame that aren't her skin, it's going to take the mask away. That's what the power of the black brush is. Now, I saw there that it sort of started to take it away from her forehead. So I'm just gonna change my hardness to 50% and keep going. And I'll just brush this all away. I don't think it was really doing a bad thing to her hair. Uh, so I think it's okay, but we could have left it, but we'll just take it out just to be sure. All right, that seems fine. All right, let's see now just zooming in. Is there anywhere we should brush it away? No, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I see it is affecting the detail in her eyes. So let me just click, turn that lower layer off so you can see what's happening. So it's supplying there. This is exactly what happens in neural filters too. It, it ends up selecting the eyes all the time. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Infinite Retouch plugin in order to create a dodge and burn layer. So we'll come over here to Infinite Retouch. Okay, that looks great. And then the things I wanna do is I wanna come over here to the Retouch tab, and I wanna come down under here under Dodge and Burn, and I wanna put Curves and it's gonna automatically create those layers for me for the dodge and burn. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna burn down the tip of her nose. And the reason is that I feel it's sort of blending into her cheek a little too much. And so I'm just gonna get some definition sort of going in there. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead now and make sure that I'm clicked on the burn layer and I am. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my paintbrush, I'm gonna switch over and make it white and make sure that's pure white then i'm going to change my flow up here to about three percent all right and i'll just confirm my hardness is zero okay that feels pretty good so i'm going to grab my pencil or a pen and i'm gonna um, just start to burn in this part of her nose All right, I think that feels pretty good. Let's turn it on and off. There it is off and there it is on. And if I zoom out, you'll just kind of see that there's some more definition there and there's a little less there. So, um, actually, I'm gonna feather this out a little bit more I'm gonna feather, I'm gonna pick a bigger brush and I'm just gonna come back in here and sort of paint that out a little bit where it was pretty defined. Okay, now you'll notice there's some like color here that I'm not digging. I think I'll fix that a little later. Um, no, actually we could fix it right now. Um, all right, so I'm gonna make another layer here and I'm gonna call that layer um, Heal Cleanup. Okay, and the reason for this layer is I'm just gonna, oh, I gotta get it out of the dodge and burn area. I'll drag it up there. The reason why I'm gonna um, use this particular layer is now it's on top of everything, including the dodge and the burn, and I'm just gonna clean up some areas that I think need a little fixing. So um, remember we have this reddish area on her nose. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab um, the um, heel brush and I'm going to try to cl clean that up. Okay, so I think that worked out pretty well to get that color out of there. Yeah, and now it's it's all the same color of skin. Now if I zoom out a little bit, I can see that there's some areas that I didn't really finish well here. Like I probably should have should fix these um, these hairs. 
There's always more that you can do. Um, I'll fix this eyelash a little bit. I see that there's a lighter hair right there. Maybe I can get rid of some of this hair. Maybe I can get rid of this one. Those, something like that. I think I just saw something down here. Yeah, maybe I'll get rid of these lines. Okay, something like that. Just know that I could go back in and do a lot more, but that's the general idea. Okay, so the next thing I wanna fix here is her hair. And you'll notice that it's different color here than over here. And the reason is maybe I have the lights in the wrong place or maybe they are, um, her hair is a different color there. So I'm gonna call this hair fix. All right, and I'm gonna set the blending mode to color. All right, then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab the color picker and I'm gonna pick a part from her hair, pick a color from her hair. Um, that's kind of a darker tone. I think that one feels pretty good. Maybe I'll just go a little darker than that. Okay, great. Then I'm gonna grab my brush. I'm gonna make sure that my hardness is zero and that's good. I've gotta make my flow um, 100. And now I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna paint in this area. And that looks pretty good. I think I might be a little heavy handed, so I'm just gonna feather back the opacity a little, but I think that looks pretty good. So here it is before, I mean after, and here it is before. So you get kind of the idea. Maybe I could paint in that even. No, maybe not. We'll just leave it. <laughs> we'll let it be. Um, no, I use a smaller brush. No, I don't like that. <laughs> okay, so there it is with the fix. There it is without. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to grab the white brush and I'm going to try to take this away from her bangs a little. Oh, no, it wouldn't be the white brush. It would be the eraser tool. I'm going to grab the eraser tool and I'm going to just um, paint some of that. Not that much. Paint this out right there. Right like that. Okay, that feels good. All right, so it's not perfect, but it gives you an idea. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix the background. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm just gonna call it uh, BG. All right, so this is where I said earlier that you would use 16-bit versus 8-bit. When you're painting on a background, in this case, I'm about to paint on it, um, it would be better for you to use 16-bit than 8. So this is a do what I say, not what I do sort of thing because I launched this video, uh, this image in eight and I started editing it and I didn't really think about that. And what could happen, but it didn't, is you could end up with some banding. And just know that if you see banding and you're zoomed out like this, but you don't see it when you're zoomed in at 100%, it probably doesn't exist. It's just some flaw with Photoshop's engine and just know that that's sort of the case. But essentially what I did here when I was shooting the picture was I was using a painted backdrop and I thought I might want the texture, but now I'm looking at it and I don't really like it that much. And I changed my blend mode to color. All right, then the next thing is I'm gonna grab the brush tool. I'm gonna click over here where it says white and I'm gonna change that. And I'm gonna click on my purple over here and click okay. Maybe I'll click up here. Okay, good. So I've got a good selection. I'm going to bring my um, brush up a little bigger. I'm going to change my flow to maybe 50%. And I'm going to just start to paint this area in. I'm using option click to sample. And that's just getting me that color that's under there. I think you generally get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead now and put a before and after up on screen for you guys so you can see uh, what it looks like and everything that I did on this photo. My general philosophy when I'm doing retouching is to get things done as efficiently and I, as I can and to do a really good job and have the images look fairly natural. Before when I was using the neural filters, I knew that what I was doing wasn't exactly right. It was just sort of good enough kind of thing. And 
I, I knew that there was something better out there and I think the infinite skin panel definitely is that. I think that it allows you to uh, get that skin smoothing done in a more professional way. And then of course, using the infinite retouch to generate the dodge and burn layers is just a lot faster uh, than doing it otherwise. So um, I definitely will put a link to them, like I said, in the description for you guys to check those out. And if you're interested in seeing how I created this image, I have a tutorial on my website, The Academy with John Gress, where you can see me go through the entire shoot and figure out the gels and what power they should be and where they should be placed in the entire process. And once again, there is a three day free trial if you'd like to check that out. So as always, stay safe, have a great day. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below and I'll talk to you soon.